This week in part three of our G-Speed Element Enduro build, we'll be wiring up the electronics and giving it all a test. Exciting times. Stay tuned. Hi folks and welcome back to the uh, Belly Dragger build, the G-Speed Element Enduro. Um, things have moved on a little bit since the last video last week. Uh, as you can see, we're looking like a completed truck now. So at the end of the last video, we finished up basically with a, a dragging chassis. Uh, since then, things have moved on a little bit and we've put some wheels and tires on. Um, I've gone with the uh, Amazon uh, axe speed beadlock wheels that I had already and also the Proline flat iron tires. These have got the Club 5 racing um, dual stage foams in them so we'll see how they got on here. Didn't really get on with them too well uh, with the Louise Champs but they seem to fill these tires out a little bit better so I'm hoping they'll be a bit better and this is a much lighter truck than the, than the Sherpa was. Uh, obviously we've got a body shell now so this is not as you might think a proline uh, power wagon body this is actually the front part of the ftx outback texan so that is a you know a power wagon type it's got a cage back that kind of stuff you can buy the whole shell with the cage back and all the accessories or you can just buy the cab part for about 23 pounds, I think. So that's probably less than $30 US. Um, and since I knew I was gonna be throwing away most of the, certainly all of the rear bed and uh, probably taking chunks off uh, the Proline one, I didn't really want to spend 50 pounds twice as much just to throw most of it away. So this seemed like a really good option. I'm really pleased with it. It's come out really well. Um, painted it up. These are uh, Core RC paints. It's just black. Uh, there's a white pinstripe in there and then the grey is called Shock Grey. Uh, these are colours that I just had from a previous um, car that I've got. I, I'm not going to concentrate much on the paintwork. I'm not particularly good at painting. There are much better videos out there on YouTube that can tell you how to do that. Uh, the one tip I did find, which I was really quite pleased with, uh, is some pinstriping masking tape or precision masking tape, which allowed me to do this nice three millimeter pinstripe all the way around uh, without too much messing about. So I was quite pleased that was a good discovery, uh, made the whole job a lot easier. Uh, we've got a nice metal bumper that I've managed to find on eBay, courtesy of one of the guys on one of the Facebook groups. He pointed me in the right direction for that. Um, that's great. That means I've not had to ship it in from the US and pay $50 worth of uh, shipping costs. Uh, so quite pleased with that. I've added the, the D-rings on there because um, I had those already, but that was okay. So that was about £30, uh, which is not super cheap. Uh, but similarly, you know, it's a nice solid piece of kit. The guy that makes them, uh, you know, makes them in small quantities. So they're never going to be uh, mass produced type cheap price. Um, but really pleased with that good solid bit of kit and that has meant that i could i didn't have to use the chassis brace that i've got in i had in the front and that's now gone in the rear shock tower so i'm very happy about that okay 
Let's get a little bit closer in. Uh, we'll look at the electronics placement. I've placed the electrics, but it's not all connected up yet. Um, so we'll have a look at that and we'll get connected up and then we'll configure and give it a test. So in terms of electronics placement, I've done a bit of digging around, spent a lot of time looking through posts on the, the Facebook groups, trying to figure out, you know, which is the best way to do this where do you put the the motor and well the motor's kind of fixed um where do you, but where do you put the esc and everything else in in relation to the motor to try and balance the weight out and one thing i tried to do um was a kind of side side to side um measurements just with my normal kitchen scales that turned out to be really difficult but one thing i did find is that actually without any of the just with the motor and the gearbox in there it's quite well balanced and the, the servo, sorry, as well. <clears throat> so it's quite well balanced. Um, the weight of the motor, this 540 can particularly, is not wildly dissimilar to the weight of the, the gearbox uh, on the other side. So they balance quite nicely together. So what I've decided to do is line up my electronics and my extra little bit of weight on this side, uh, along with the, the servo, so that that weight is on there. And then my battery weight is gonna go on the other side um, and that is probably about as as even as I'm going to be able to get it without, you know, a set of really good four point scales and all that kind of stuff. Which I'm, you know, now obviously I bought uh, the receiver with the radio, and they come pre bound, which is really helpful and very handy for me. Uh, it means I haven't got to mess about doing it. But it is a pretty straightforward process uh, anyway. Just not one that I need to go through. Um, I must confess, I have already uh, connected this up and centered the servo. So as soon as you um, put power into that servo, it will center on itself. Um, make sure you disconnect. If you've already, if you've built to this stage the same as I did, make sure you disconnect the uh, the steering link before you do that, uh, because the last thing you want is if you for some reason your servo's got twisted round or you've, you've not got the servo horn on straight. The last thing you want is for your steering to jam across and burn out your servo. So make sure that's disconnected from the steering when you actually power it up for the first time. It will then centre. Uh, you can then mount the servo horn as, as centrally as you can um, and mount up the steering links and you're good to go. So that is all you need to do. Uh, the end points are about right. I actually reduced the end points a little bit on the radio. Um, just to about 90%, I think, just so that they're not straining on those uh, stops. But there are stops on there, um, so you can work to those, which is which is good. So connecting up, nice and simple. Uh, steering is channel one. So brown wire, which is the negative in this case, wants to be on the outside of the receiver, not the, not the truck. Uh, so in this case, it wants to go to the bottom or as per the video, the far left. So channel one, plugged in, drops are good in. ESC is always channel two, or at least on these receivers anyway, and everything I've seen so far. So we'll connect that up. And that's that connected up. All I need to do now is solder on my motor wires to my motor. I'm not using plugs. Um, I much prefer to direct solder them. I'm going to solder them long at this stage, just while we're doing the testing, make sure we're all happy and it's all working. And then afterwards, I can trim those right down. Once I know that I'm happy that this is gonna stay, um, we trim it right down, take off, you know, big chunk of wire that's just excess weight that we don't need. And similarly, we have an XT60 plug on here already. Uh, I use XT60s on all my batteries, which is great. So I don't have to change anything there. Uh, I, but again, I probably will shorten that lead. It's surprising how much weight uh, you carry in extra leads that you don't need. Uh, I won't bother shortening these leads, um, the servo wires, because they're pretty light. Uh, they're only quite thin. Uh, we'll just zip tie those up together just to make sure that they're nice and tidy and don't get in the way of everything. Uh, and then we've mounted our power button just on the front. The reason I've mounted it just there particularly is that when the body shell's on, you can reach in from underneath and turn it on and off, which is quite handy. So we'll break out the soldering iron, get that soldered up, and then we can go through configuring uh, the ESC. Okay, so from the factory, these are tinned, uh, these wires, but 
I don't know what it is that they use. It's really not very good stuff. So I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm just literally clipping the end off uh, and I'll retin those wires with some decent solder. So the solder I use is about a 6040. Um, so it is a lead solder. I know a lot of people don't like that anymore, but it is far better to solder with than, than the lead free stuff. Uh, and it's a flux core as well. Um, so I think it's called a rosin, rosin, rosin core. Um, really good stuff. Not the cheapest, but it's good. That's more important. So we'll get some heat on there. Plenty of solder in there. So we've got a nicely tinned wire and that should flow quite nicely on to our motor when we're ready. So we're going to tin the contacts on the motor. It's another thing worth mentioning while we're here uh, is the pinion that I've used. So neither the motor nor the kit, the builder's kit, come with a pinion. Um, so this is something I didn't know a great deal about. So I jumped onto the um, the G-Speed Facebook group and asked for some advice. Obviously I'm aware that I want slow gearing, so I probably wanted quite a small pinion. Um, so it's a 48 pitch pinion, and it seems to be that the, th the smallest pinion I could get for that was a 13 tooth. One or two people suggested going for an 11 tooth, uh, but I couldn't find one anywhere. Um, so what I've ended up doing is going with an axial um, 13 tooth 48 pitch pinion uh, for the motor and hopefully that will give me a really pretty slow truck. Now it might be too slow for general trail use um, but I don't really see me using it much as a trail truck anyway so I've got another truck for that. Um, the other thing I've noticed is that the the droop in the suspension is quite pronounced um, now that it's got some weight on it so we may either have to put some stiffer springs in there maybe put a bit of preload on them i don't know there's a bit of shock tuning to do but i'm going to see how it runs before we mess about doing that right so soldering up our motor so the yellow wire is the positive motor positive uh, and that wants to go and the, the positive pole is marked on the motor with a little red blob um, so we just want to get that onto there i'm actually going to do the negative first though just purely because it's a little bit more difficult to get to. So put a bit of solder on the iron. We've already tinned the wire. Hold those in place while it goes cold. We've got a nice solid bond there. Again, In the tip could do with a new tip of this actually it's <clears throat> served me well but it's on its last legs get those two flow together nicely hold it in place while it sets there we go good solid bond on both of those happy with that that's not going anywhere well, that's it job done soldering iron can go away so with the uh, Hobbywing ESC, you get a few little bits and pieces extra. Obviously you get quite a lengthy uh, user manual, which is quite good. Um, I'm gonna use that in a moment just to make sure that I get the calibration um, procedure right, because I've only done it once before. Uh, it's pretty simple, but I just wanna make sure that I get that right. You get some very cool stickers, which I really like, and there will almost certainly be some of those going on uh, the body shell in a moment. But the, the little gem is this programming card. So the programming card uh, allows you to change 
all sorts of parameters on the ESC. Um, there's loads of stuff you can do in here. You can change the running mode, the battery type, cutoff voltage, um, start force, all of that kind of stuff. But crucially, and this is why I think this is a great little budget uh, ESC and definitely worth the extra few pounds over some of those other cheaper ones is you can adjust the drag brake quite a lot on this one. So you can adjust the brake itself and also the rate that it applies. Um, with this being quite a lightweight truck, I am going to reduce the drag brake down to about 50%. Um, I do like to be able to kind of roll down hills and rock faces with the, using the drag brake rather than having to accelerate to get moving. Um, and I think that helps with the old steering wiggle trick as well. You, <clears throat> the steering wiggle and the drag brake give it a really nice smooth descent capability. And the drag brake rate I'm going to turn down as well. Uh, again, because it's a light truck, I don't want the brake jamming on uh, as soon as I come off the throttle because uh, that has a tendency to kind of unsettle the trucks uh, a little bit. So we'll have that down at about half and we'll see how we get on with that. The nice thing is, of course, you can take this out to the field with you uh, or to the, to the rocks and change it on the fly. If you're not happy uh, with how you've got it set up, you just plug it in uh, and, and make a change. It's fabulous. I love it. So let's go on with that now as soon as we've done the calibration. So on our radio, I've gone with this, like I said before, the FlySky uh, FS GT5. We'll have a look at that another time. Uh, we'll power that on. It's first, first job. And we will plug in the battery. And what you might notice here is we are off the ground currently. Uh, the last thing you want is to um, switch on the truck, something would be wrong with the ESC and it goes shooting off. So either take the wheels off or what's obviously better is lift it off the desk on a on some sort of uh, axle stands or something. So the first thing we do now we're plugged in is we hold down the set button and we switch on. We'll get that lovely beeping. So move the throttle stick to the neutral position, which it is, and then press the set button again. Get a confirm beep. Then we want to go full forward throttle. Press the button. Two beeps. Full reverse. Three beeps. And that's it. We're all set. Should be good to go. There we go. And the first thing I'm noticing there is my wheels are going backwards. So we'll power off and we'll plug in our programming card. Now when you power on with this plugged in, it will go straight into programming mode. So we've got running mode, uh, forward brake, forward reverse brake or forward reverse. We want forward reverse, that's the best way. So that means when we're in our neutral position uh, with the trigger, we've got our drag brake on. So we'll go on to the next item, which is the battery type selected as LiPo, which is correct. All of the defaults are listed in the manual, so you can check that beforehand. Um, Cutoff voltage is automatically set to medium. I'll leave it at that. Start force, no, I don't want any of those. So the next one I want is item nine, which is my drag brake, and I wanted to set that to number four, which is 50%. So, there we go. Value four, and that's done. And then we'll go to item 10, drag brake rate. That goes level one to level nine. I don't know quite what they are. I'm gonna go with level five, just over halfway. Okay, value five which is a little bit more than it already had. Potentially, I don't know. Don't know if level one's the maximum or the minimum. And the other thing that I want to change, actually, which I'd forgotten about, uh, just okay that, is the reverse. I like to have a little bit, I like to have less reverse than forward, so I tend to put it on uh, half throttle for reverse. Now, that may be too slow on this truck, uh, we'll see, but so maximum reverse force, 
uh, you've got 25 percent 50 percent 75 percent or 100 percent which you won't be able to read on the screens but uh, I'm going to go with 75 percent so that's num item three so it's set that's interesting it's already set at 50 percent uh, yeah I'm going to go with number three which is 75 percent And that's it. So I thought you could change the direction of the motor using uh, the ESC. You can't by the looks of things. So I'm going to have to swap those wires over and that should change our direction of our motor. So it's not the prettiest soldering job in the world, um, but they're good solid connections. That's the main thing and I can tidy that up when I shorten the wires at a later stage. Uh, so we will bring our battery back in, power it back up, and hopefully we'll be going in the right direction. Yes, forward is now forward, and reverse is reverse. And that's it. Essentially, for this stage, the build's complete now. There's some wiring tidying up to do, so I'll grab some zip ties and do a little bit of that. Uh, then we'll pop the body on and um, just try it out. Right, so just to show you how the body mounts. So on this bed that I've 3D printed, um, I've put a, a kind of um, bolt through there, screw through there, a nylon standoff in there, and then just a lock nut on the end sort of creates a kind of body post and then on the front these are the body posts that came with the kit and they just have a screw through them into the the shock tower so body slots down over there yes it does slots onto those holes and then onto the body post at the front and that's it So that's it for this video. I'm just gonna leave this now with some running video, running footage from uh, the tests that I did after we finished the build. I'm really, really pleased with the way it's driving. There was quite a bit of torque twist in there initially, uh, but I've managed to tune that out just with a bit of uh, preload on the springs of the shocks. Um, so that was fairly straightforward. And other than that, it's performing really well. I think it probably could do with some weight up front over the front wheels. Um, it does sort of, it doesn't seem to climb as well as some of my other trucks, but what it, what it lacks in that area, uh, it makes up for more in its composure. So you can apply uh, quite a bit of wheel speed up climbs um, without unsettling the truck and it wanting to flip over. So really pleased with how that's working. So if you enjoyed the video today and uh, the series so far, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, it really helps the channel out uh, if you give us a like and uh, obviously if you want to see more on this build uh, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell uh, so you get told when those videos are released there probably won't be a huge amount more in this series um, maybe a bit of shock tuning um, maybe a bit of extra weight like i say uh, and i will be adding a winch at some point okay hope you enjoy this footage and we'll see you on the next one